Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 88. You are now listening to the podcast of Chronicles of a Nonprofit at Dr. Darina Shine TV on YouTube. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Let's get right into the topic today. You know, this is a pre record, and I just want to get on here and just, you know, share a little bit about confidence. I was listening to a podcast the other day, and it had to represent confidence and how confidence is triggering to some people who don't understand your mission and your vision and your goal. So as entrepreneurs, I think it is highly vital that we discuss how your confidence is looked at in a negative form even though you are doing things that are re- that represent your brand, that set you aside and apart and makes you unique. These people want to sit back and literally defame you or ignore you because of the fact that you're doing what you're doing. Keep doing it. Keep shining. Entrepreneurs, because you're standing your lane, seeing this is the thing. I remember in high school, my uncle always told me, starting junior high, he always said, and my uncle, he was a foreman of a union that he was the only African-American during the time that he worked there. So he knew a lot. He knew a lot about how to handle people under extreme stressful situations. So he always told me, starting junior high school, he said, listen, whenever you go, this is the goal. You're going to go into that big building there, and you're going to be around all these kids. Everybody is going to be taught a different way, but you're taught differently too. Keep what you've been taught. And what you do when you go in that building, if things get too stressful for you, In the middle of class, you know that you're safe when you're in that classroom because the teacher is right there. But in between those moments of change of class, gym, library, and all those other elective classes, remember this, always be busy. Oh, man, you know, when it gets too too hot, conversation get too much. Oh, my God, I got to go see Miss Bailey. She told me to meet her. I'll be right back and leave it there. When you're in the bathroom and you're being cornered and it's a bunch of gossip and this and that and that and this, guess what? Man, I got choir. I got to go. Oh, I got to go get something out of my locker. I'll be right back and just leave it there. You know, that was the best advice out of many, many Things that I was told at a time that mattered the most to me. And I followed that advice. And even in high school, I was so busy working. When I was 16 years old, I had a job. I was a pillow packer at a pillow factory. So I got out of school, 2.30, 3 o'clock, bam, I'm at work till 9 o'clock. And what took place is life began to show me responsibility and accountability. Not that I was competing with any of my peers, because none of them were really doing anything like that. It was just the opportunities that was that was afforded to me. So what I say to you is it's the same in your world. You're shining your best in the position you're in to the point where you could take the supervisor's position if you so chose. If you so chose, that's why many people are going after their own entrepreneurship because they recognize and they realize that many people have gotten positions and titles and they weren't accredited to have those not accredited by a certificate or anything like that, but just experience in and of itself. So as you're going through your journey and you're walking through your life and you're seeing how things really are, I want you to recognize that your confidence is going to make people look in your lane 
They're going to see that Ferrari. They're going to say, mm, who is that? Because they don't have a Ferrari, right? They're going to see the Maserati. And they're going to say, who is that? And they're going to speed up. Don't, don't even care what's in front of them. They, just, just very, very triggering. Very anxiety prone because somebody got it before them. And so when they hit you side to side and they look in, it's amazing when you have the tenant windows, right? <laughs> they can't tell who it is. That frustrates them, right? So what you got to do is keep staying in your lane and kind of maybe even fall off the speed if you got to. Because you know your stuff can go from zero to 100 in 2.2 seconds, right? <laughs> so you don't even have to. You could fall back. You could switch lanes. You could do whatever you want to do. And that's the freedom of being confident without arrogance. And see, the ego used to drive the confidence because people around you were so jealous and envious and concerned about what it was you were doing to the point where they were watching your life faster than they were watching their own, right? Right? So in this situation, you had to build an ego to protect your confidence. Remember, once you get that certain age level, you got to make sure that you remember it's okay to fall back. It's okay now to take that ego and put it in the back seat until you need it again. When these demons show back up, when they try to sh tell you that you're, you know, doing too much or you're not doing enough or whatever it is you're doing. And that's one thing I found the, the freedom of being my own entrepreneur helped me see that I didn't need to compete or compare to anyone else because I was my unique person. And as you're being your unique person, you realize that you have access to a whole lot, including time. And if you are conditioned on using time wisely, that's energy. And that's, that energy is going to bring synergy. And that synergy is going to bring manifestation. And that manifestation is going to bring practice. So you got to realize that. You know, hold on one second. Let me turn this off. Hold on. Yeah, it's going to bring what you That uniqueness is gonna is gonna cause you. Doing is gonna cause them to get all out of proportion. But when you are used to preparing your time and making sure, just like I made sure that all of my alarms were off when I did this podcast, because I knew I was gonna be doing a podcast. But when other people's energy brings that synergy, creates a manifestation, you have to work very diligently on making sure that you <laughs> know when to make that video to where nothing will create a situation where your time is not used for the best benefit. So for instance, if I had to get up at three this morning, like I was supposed to, or two or one or 1230 or four, maybe that alarm wouldn't have went off just now. And I would have kept my train of thought, but back on, back in the lane I'm in, confidence is triggering to many people. And when they recognize it, either they're gonna continue to try to beat you down at it. Like I said, going to school, and then having to go to work immediately after that, saving up my money, um, putting myself in a better position to where I could save for my first vehicle, et cetera, et cetera. That was the lifestyle in which I grew up. I grew up before, well, around the 80s, okay, 87, I graduated. So 
um, you know, watching a different world was a, uh, and watching the Cosby show was extremely vital to how I grew up. And I wanted to grow up like one of the Huxtable kids, you know what I mean? And that's how I did it. I did it like that, but we didn't have Dr. and Claire, you know, but we did have the mother and the grandmother that was just as strong in building the confidence within their children as they did. Yeah, we made a few mistakes. We made many mistakes. But the reality of it was that through those mistakes and all the consequences that came after the mistakes, it taught us how not to make as many mistakes as we would. But learning and experiencing is a definite plus. It's a great plus. So these people are going to be truly triggered by your confidence and that ego is there to protect us, to continue, to continue to make sure that we're doing what we need to do to stay confidently connected to what our passions are. Because distractions will definitely come in and cause us to, you know, change up suit, you know, um, maybe to, we meet the wrong person just because that was a distraction. And we were supposed to say, no, nah, I'm cool. I'm focused on this. But yet what happens is we're not even ready. We meet this new person in our lives. And what happens? We get totally distracted. They're on a whole nother level. They're doing something totally different than what we would have ever considered having done. Because we did not put a specific plan into place and see it come to fruition before it showed up. So that confidence is very vital. It's very important. And this is something we need to be teaching our children, right? Right? Something that'll make them think, something that'll make them see that don't cry about it when you've already done it and it's been implanted into the distraction has been planted into the situation, and then you want to blame him, him, her, her, him, they, they, that, and everything else. No, you blame you. And then you heal from that blame. And you he you heal from the guilt. And then you move into the process of, well, maybe I'm supposed to go this route because I wasn't supposed to go that route. Or maybe this is just something as a setback that's going to bring a comeback that's going to be a lot more um, conducive based upon my age, my time, you know, what I'm willing and able to commit to. For example, I remember applying for Emory Law School in, in Atlanta, in Georgia, and I wanted to go to law school, and my twins were about 11 years old, and I was ready. I was ready to make the move. I was ready to put my mindset there because I'd already been to Atlanta when I was younger and I just wanted to go back. And so it amazed me because the day that I put the application into the mailbox to send off to the university, I went to the doctor and found that I was pregnant with my last daughter. And I could not believe that because everything was just all in divine timing. And I just was not supposed to go back there to live to whatever I was going to do, whether I was going to stay or whether I was going to, you know, trans, you know, transfer back and forth, whatever it was at that particular moment, I was not supposed to do that because it didn't, it didn't come to fruition. But then, too, my actions distract could have distracted that. So, you know, there's different types of ways that you can look at the paths that we are on, but we never blame anyone. I am grateful for all things. Every single thing that ever occurred in my life, I'm truly grateful for. So with that, I just want to say that the confidence that you build within yourself is something that you need to keep silently. And yes, you are not to dumb yourself down. You are not to back yourself into a corner or become less than because of what 
others around you are doing or not doing. They're just not capable of making that opportunity happen for themselves. And you can be the example to show them that it is possible. You can be the example to show them that this is possible. And when they see you do it, you know, to me, I looked at a lot of people in my life as having things and motivating themselves and looking beautiful and and just having material possessions. And I never really got envious or jealous. What I did was I said, wow, they were able to do that. And I was so happy that if they can do it, I can do it. That's my mentality. That's how I am, you know, put together. And you're the same way. You're you're exactly the same way. And it's like, okay, I like that. I see the entrepreneurship. I like what they're doing. I like the freedom and the flexibility. So this is what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. And at that time, it does not become competition. It's only competition when someone looks at you and says, oh, they're not doing much of anything. That ain't nothing. A free this, a free that, a little community this or a little community that. But they don't understand that if they would take that same energy and put that energy into their manifestation, that little bit becomes a lot in the end. Okay. So I I sit back and I humbly laugh. I smirk at those who, you know, want to challenge why people do what they do. That's what they're there to do. What are you doing? And to say, oh, I can do it better. You know, those people who, you know, can put it out there. Oh, I can do much better than that. That's nothing. Let me go out here and compete. Now, what they're doing is taking away from water bills, gas bills, light bills, car notes, house notes. They could be beautifying their property, but instead they're buying things that would just to compete so someone else can see them shining. And some of that shine is not even about shining to say, oh, you inspired me, you motivated me. A lot of that shine is to slap you in the face for the things that you're doing to distract you. But being in their lane is what they're doing. Being in your lane is what you continue to do. And that's how you that's how you get through. That's how the confidence stays consistent and does not become arrogance. When we recognize that whatever we do, we're not doing it for the eyesight or the purpose of of the community looking and saying, oh, you see what they did last week or you see what they did last month. It's about helping humanity. And when you help humanity, you come out with a different type of feeling. That's why I love seeing attorneys give back, you know, to, to you know, the community. I love seeing that. Programs that really and truly work. Expungement programs. Um, legal aid programs. Different things like that. Because that is what makes a person realize that Someone is watching them. Someone does understand and see what is taking place in the world. And everyone is not all bad. And everyone is not all good. So you got to sit back and you got to take everything with a grain of salt and do your research. You know, I just had to tell a client the other day, no matter what comes in my life, if it does not bring fruition if it does not manifest itself, I ain't worried about it. Why? Because that was not mine, period. It was something in the manifestation that I created with my higher power that said this person was not involved in it. This person is not part of the get down. So they can't be there. And when we force people to be there, what takes place is we become stagnant. Something is distracted. Something else comes into position. Um, It's not that they're throwing themselves into the manifestation in order to 
overthrow you in some way. And sometimes it can look like that. But many times it's about them making the decision to say, I just want to get in there to see how they do it. I just want to get in there to feel, you know, important. I just want to get in there to, you know, whatever their purposes are. But it's not always sabotage. And I'm beginning to see that because more beautiful people are showing me after the, the, after the hurt, after the healing, now I'm seeing the true genuine people and I'm growing again. So that's the mentality in which we are now focused. See, I used to say, oh, it was about the sabotagers. Oh, they're haters. Oh, they're this and they're that. I believe 2024 is going to universally show me the good people because I've already passed the exams. So everything from the past is there. It is something to remember. It is something never to forget. It is something to empower us, to catapult us into the, the future. But we must now continue to move in a journey. Journeying into the future is the, is the success of 2024. So I just wanted to get on and I wanted to put this meal out here because I want you to know that confidence is triggering to some people. Confidence is emotionally draining to other people who can't do it. So you're not supposed to stop what you're doing at all. I'm just telling you to be mindful of how people are looking at your success. And in this mindfulness, you keep it moving. You keep that moving because you're the best you walking in the shoes you're rocking. <laughs> but what I'm also saying is just to let you know how others are feeling. Stay confident. Be on time. Be ready. And be the best you you can be rocking in the shoes you're wearing. Peace.